Welcome back to No Chill with Gilbert Arenas. Our guests today are trying to get buckets in the alternative sports game by bringing back the cult classic slam ball. We got founder and CEO Mason Gordon, mm -hmm. and we got an OG slam ball legend who's now the VP of operations, Stan Shakes Fletcher in the building. We Shakes. appreciate y'all pulling up. <laughs> Shakes. How cool did he make that sound? <laughs> no, no, it's, a, it's a way better than it is. Shakes is that. I'm rolling with it. That's yeah, a, that's I, a, I like it, man. I like the way you said it. Nah, I appreciate you. But um, before we get into the nitty gritty, for those that don't know, Y'all were high school teammates together. Mm -hmm. so I want to know, what was Gil like in high school, and did you ever oh. imagine that he would go on to become Agent Zero? I, actually, I'm going to tell you the truth. I already knew he was going. He was, he was going to go, for sure, because Gil had just raw talent. Man, he used to piss everybody off. <laughs> so, <laughs> so he was fearless. Like, um, I, I'm going to tell you about, about um, what he used to do is uh, he used to bring boxing gloves to, to school. <laughs> See, so people. Every time, <laughs> every time at, at like lunch or whatever, Somebody getting knocked out. He'll start, he'll start it off by punching somebody, right? And he'll either punch somebody big and be running, or he'll start the, the, the fight and the beefs off. So everybody was ready to, uh, to get into action. So that was just one thing he used to do. And, um, you and, get your Draymond dog? Yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's just, I just, I just like excitement. I just, I don't know, I just like the torture of being punched on. So I just wanted to always, just a thing. Yeah, so that was one of his things. And then, um, uh, he used to always mess with the older guys. Like if it was somebody older, like Kizzy or something like that. Mm -hmm. If it was somebody older, he'll he'll always be messing with them, and he just talk a lot of crap. And but he'll always back it up mm -hmm. on the court. So that's why I already knew he was going. He was going to do his thing. What's, what's funny is our um, our JV. So when I always tell my story about you know I started off at JV right, and everybody's like, oh you play JV. People don't realize our. First of all, the varsity was his, his own little thing. Like, right? It was like all of them was trying to go pro out of high yeah. school at one point. Yeah. The JV, if if everybody was going everywhere, they would have been starting on varsity. That's how good the JV team was. That's how. So when I said like I set the bench, I wasn't sitting the bench on today's JV. Okay, okay. fuck is terrible. <laughs> I know, I know, Nick, I feel the same way. It wasn't it. Yeah, it was no, terrible no, JV. No. Like the our JV was. Yeah. The thing. Well, MJ played JV, so ultimately it can't be that bad. Yeah, yeah. Nah, but I'm just like when people think about JV, like that, like our JV was a varsity team. So, girl, so I gotta man. know, you know, the people out there need to know too. Who was giving who buckets? Oh no, he was giving me buckets. Okay. <laughs> was I'm, I'm, I'm glad to hear you admit that. <laughs> like, I was, I was trying to hang, but I wasn't, I wasn't there, I wasn't there yet. Like I, I caught my my stride like towards the end of the season, going into that summer. Like we used to go to, uh, we used to play. Was it like Janessa? But what was it? Is it Galt? Uh, used to be a Galt, the little small, small yeah, yeah, And we used to just, yeah. it was every, it was every, every Friday, Friday, every, every, every Friday. Friday, dunk ball. Yeah. Like that was just, and that was a thing all, we did. All the, all the top players in the battle used to come up there, like, because it's eight foot rim, eight yeah. and a half foot rim. No, for sure. <laughs> it's like everybody getting, getting everybody work. getting bodied on. So you on. get all the best shit, uh, <laughs> but then you're going to get the, uh, you know, the, the dunks and all that. So that was dope. That well, was can dope. I ask you a question? Like, what kind of athlete was Stan back then? Supreme. Like, when I, when, when I was watching, um, when I was watching uh, Slam Ball, it all made sense. More advanced than everyone else, the creativity. So when you're talking about all athletes, then you have to have someone to, if you want to dunk on the Kizzies and all them, David Redmond's. So you got, which David Redmond was in the league too, yeah. eight foot, and you got him trying to protect it. Now guys who's trying to dunk have to be more creative. Yeah. Right? So when you see him unleash the creativity, and I guarantee you, you were sitting there like, I didn't even know you can do the stuff you're doing. Can I tell you a story? Uh -huh. So I'm in tra we're in training camp, and uh, Stan Fletcher, the first series that we did, Stan Fletcher and Michael Goldman were this one-two punch, right? Mm -hmm. I know you you know yeah. Michael. Goldman's a yeah, legend. And Michael, too. Yeah, I'll play AU together. <laughs> And what's crazy is Michael is will never pass the ball and will shoot the ball to death, right? Uh -huh. But in slam ball, Michael was just passing. Mm -hmm. He didn't really want it at the rim, so he was setting up Stan. <laughs> uh -huh. So going into the second season, Stan would get frustrated, like, yeah, you missed me on that one. You missed me on that one. And so he goes up to shoot a jumper and hit the ball like slips out of his hand. So it only goes halfway to the rim. It's like a egregious air ball. Mm -hmm. But as he's coming down, I'm like watching this happen from across the court. I can see the wheels turn in his head and he can be like, I can bounce and go get that. Mm -hmm. And so he just bounced and he went up and just, whoa, 
oh, on the stopper. And literally everyone went, oh, and then there, you couldn't hear. It was like you could hear a pin drop mm-hmm. and everyone turned their their head to me and they go, is that yeah, legal? It's like, can you do that? <laughs> and I go, hell yes. <laughs> and so what Stan did was figure out how to move outside the rules mm. to be able to collect the ball in between the bounces. And that created this whole kind of a creative expression of freestyle play in the sport. You've seen it. It was, it was crazy because I'm looking at it and you're just like, is he just coming up with this stuff on his own? Like, like yeah. it's the, the things you're doing, it's like, it just reminds me of how we play mm-hmm. yes, and yes. the things that you, were, you would do. And it was like, He's bringing all of that into slam ball. Jesus Christ. I was, we were just talking <laughs> about it because the, uh, we used to just go with the ball. It didn't even matter if we had a court or not. Mm-hmm. We'll just be dribbling and we'll try to make up whatever move we can that we can vision doing on somebody. Mm-hmm. And we'll just sit there for hours doing this stuff. And yeah. then next time we go to the park, <laughs> we look at each other. Every time we get somebody, we want to like... You remember that one, right? <laughs> yeah, that, and that was the same. That's the same thing we took in the, into slam ball. I had that same mentality. So, it's like, and what's fascinating is that you know, in a in a Mandela effect universe, Stan could have been in the league, mm-hmm. right? And I mean, he had the athletic ability, mm-hmm. he had the talent, but. Uh, it, it it just wasn't all together for him, right? Just like there's a bunch of NFL cusp guys that isn't quite all together for mm-hmm. them. A thing in the NBA they always talk about is length. It's really hard to overcome length if that's something that you don't have, right? But there are athletes out there that are born slam ball players. Stan is the apex example mm-hmm. of that. And they've just never had the platform. And they're coming from basketball and football programs. So slam ball, you know, we're marketing it as where basketball and football cultures collide. Mm -hmm. We're the UFC of team sports, full stop. And we want to bring athletes that haven't had a platform, haven't had a pathway into our sport, and then open that up to the world. So we got a lot to talk about for Slam Ball. And obviously, we all know it. We grew up on, I remember y'all first launch, I was in college watching, you know, a lot Mm -hmm. of guys that I grew up watching, like the Ghetto Bird and cast like that, that, that did their thing on the basketball court, now transferred to Slam Ball. But for those that don't know, what is slam ball? Yeah, slam ball is four on four, hockey style substitutions, nonstop up and down the floor with trampolines built into the floor, right? Mm-hmm. So the action extends almost 17, 18, 20 feet in the air sometimes, right? And that gets kind of crazy, but you think about it in terms of a creative canvas, right? And basketball is largely an X and Y axis kind of sport. The Z axis where you're extending up off the ground in basketball is 40 some inches off the ground. In Mm -hmm. slam ball, it's 140 inches off the ground. The hang time is like three X. So the idea of like all the creative expression that you can do in the air and the idea of guys doing 720s in the game on the defense, Mm -hmm. you know, backflip gainer maneuvers in order to like, toss toss the uh the assist and things like that there are there's so much creative expression with slam ball and then it's the physicality right we about 25 percent of our athletes always came from football backgrounds but this year we're really goosing those numbers so it's going to be about half basketball guys and half football guys and we're really interested in like kind of how those cultures collide on the slam ball court and mix together and mesh together. I really believe that there are only two compelling hybrid sports offerings that have a global audience, and that's MMA and slam ball. And that's where we think we are. So when we think about slam ball, not to date ourselves, but we're all older gentlemen, still good looking, still out here flourishing. I think about I think about NBA Jam, right? Like uh-huh. yeah. Back in the day, we used to hit the arcade, you put your quarter up, wait to get in, but just the, the shit that they were able to do in that game. So what was it like for you to, to look at that game, be able to play that game, and then now be able to do that in real life? That's exactly what we was thinking. Mm-hmm. Like when he came to me, I was like, oh shit, we get to play NBA Jam, like in real life. So, you know, um, the first thing is, I think we all felt like we could have played football, you know, but we loved basketball because it was so much more to do. Like, mm-hmm. you know, I know I can run and catch the ball, like, you know, but can I run, catch, dribble, pass, make decisions all at the same time? And now we get to do that in the air too. Um, so I just took that that NBA Jam mentality, playing it and seeing a, a human video game 
you know, that you get to replicate. So everything you want to do in that video game, you're going to try once you get out there in the slam ball court because now it's available, you know. So it's just like a kid in a candy shop now. It's like, yeah, 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 you yeah. Know, I can do anything. It just gave me superpowers. You know? <laughs> and, and, and it's tricky, too, because um, when it comes to putting it in the air, okay, the football players are going to be down. Not necessarily. When you're talking about creativity, you're talking about the basketball aspect, right? Yeah, that's right. So that's when right. you're talking about just straight raw athleticism, football players are going to have it. But when you're talking about creativity, trying things that you didn't even know existed, right. that's going to come from the basketball side. Yeah. Because it takes, like when you look at basketball and dunkers today, mm -hmm. right? There's a difference between the NBA slam dunk contest and then what we see on Instagram. And the stuff we see on Instagram is like, who thought of this? Yeah. Now you got to get those kids inside that arena trying that stuff. Yeah, there's two things that have happened, Gil, since the last time we played slam ball in mm -hmm. the United States. One is that the three-point revolution happened. So you've got all these world-class shooters that we can bring the slam ball and kind of balance out the action. Mm -hmm. The other thing is that kids got next level bounce now. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. So all those dudes that you see on Instagram, every one of those moves, I'm guaranteeing it right, right here, you're gonna see all that in game on the defense. Oof. And that's our baseline. That's where we're gonna grow from. So the idea of double alley-oop sets, triple alley-oop sets, double windmills, like, you know, front full where you do a flip and a twist at the same time, all this stuff is on the table. So as great as slam ball was way back when, right. when everybody remembers it, that's the peach basket days for us, right? Like mm -hmm. a lot of people, you know, Stan is arguably the goat, right? Mm -hmm. Certainly visually the goat, creatively the goat, all those things, right? But people ask, you know, is Stan the Michael Jordan of slam ball, right? Well, if Michael Jordan came and went in slam ball and, you know, we aren't the biggest thing in the world, that's probably not the case. But he's very, very much the Dr. J of slam ball. Mm -hmm. He's the first guy that made you go, oh, man, yeah. what is this? Made you lean forward. And now the level of athletes, we went out to people and we expected we'd have to do like kind of a big pitch. Like, yeah, man, it's OK. Come play slam ball. Everybody wants to do it. Every, these guys who are overseas pros play, playing professional football and all this stuff, they're looking at this and go, I've been wanting to do this yeah. for 10 years. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. They're, all com <laughs> they're all coming. Yeah. I don't know what this is going to look like. <laughs> but interestingly enough, Stan spent six years in China developing the entire training program, the mm -hmm. entire grassroots program. So we're going to be running this training camp at a very, very high level. Did, did like places like Doja Boom... And does jumpy places that did, did oh. that actually help within the last eight, nine years? Yeah. I'll tell you what that did is it created a sea change, right? Mm -hmm. Because you now have multiple generations of people that have grown up on trampolines, mostly going to kids' birthday, birthday parties, parties, right? Mm -hmm. The second piece of it, which is more important, is that parents are now comfortable with the idea of their kids on trampolines. Mm -hmm. So whereas before, people might have looked at Slam Ball and go, oh, this is the Phoenix Gorilla. Oh, this is so crazy. You know, oh, this is irresponsible. Now people are going, oh, it's trampolines. They're a part of life. Mm -hmm. So that puts us in a really good position, I think, for what we want to be long term which is the sport that you watch between basketball and football seasons. Because let me tell you, people want a sport between basketball and football seasons. They're not interested in baseball. They're not interested in MLS. That's crazy, right? <laughs> and, yep. and, and, you know, we're going to do six weeks this summer, the six-week season. But ultimately, we could go from the end of the NBA Finals to Labor Day. Are you guys going to – because you guys are mobile – are you guys going to do tryouts in different cities? No. The so in reaching out to athletes, so many people want to do this and guys with such high level resumes want to do this that we're making this particular combine invite only. So you got to know somebody, you got to get referred to us. We got to check you out. We got to check your references, talk to your coach. We don't want like lunatics in slam ball, right? I mean, well, 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 usually, listen, usually, usually when you're, when you're trying to get 
that thing, that buzz yeah, back, you're right. right? Yeah. It's just like American Idol. Which part of American Idol is actually the funniest part? That's yeah. the beginning, yeah. Yeah. right? Yeah. When, when everyone who thinks they know how to yeah. do something yeah. gets to participate. So, you know, when you have a traveling, you can travel now. Um, you might want to just have hubs and then those guys get invited to the real tryout. Yeah. Right, um, I like that. Because you'll be to be honest, you'll be surprised that a kid that's sitting somewhere that doesn't know anything about it, mm-hmm. and then they hear it, their friends going, right. and then that might be they, that they, guy. You're like, wait, what if? Yeah, <laughs> right? Came out because nowhere. you know he didn't get invited. Someone didn't know he he existed. Yeah. Right. But you came into his city. He's bored, and then he goes, yeah. and then and that, that just happens. Like somebody like like let's say John Wall, mm-hmm. right? Um, John Wall wasn't ranked. Um, they're having this big thing, and then someone's like, oh, man, I'm going to invite you there. Takes a car ride, goes there for the weekend, comes back, the number one player in the country. Yeah. Right? That's how that story happened. Yeah. John Morant, right? <laughs> no one knows who he is. He's not ranked. Um, a scout is watching the game, but, you know, the game hasn't started yet. He wants to go get a snack. He goes into the small gym. There's a three-on-three going on, and then John Morant is sitting there dunking on everybody, and then he's like, hey, who are you? And then he tells him, he talked to his coach, Murray State, yep. right? And that's, you know, you have those stories. So um, the first time you might just want to open it up and just see right. what walks into the gym. Yeah. <laughs> You'll yeah. be surprised. I will tell you that we're planning on doing a docuseries alongside the live package of games because mm-hmm. my co-founder, Mike Tolan, is the main producer behind The Last Dance. The right? legend. Yes. Yeah, he's the man. And... Like, so he, and you know, I've been at MSM for the last nine years. I've been the president of the company for the last two or three. And we've been doing, you know, the captain, the Derek Jeter series, redeem Mm -hmm. team, stuff you guys watch, stuff your audience watches, right? And so like, we know how to tell these stories and our whole thing with the docu-series, which we know how to do at a pretty high level, is we just want to stand up our own Conor McGregor, Mm -hmm. our own John Jones, our own Nate Diaz. And if we can do that, if we make you care about two or three of these guys then we know how to tell the story yeah. from there you know so we, we we think there's a galaxy of stars here and part of this is like russell crowe and gladiator right it's like are you not entertained yeah. like i'm putting a linebacker from the university of michigan on the same floor as a small forward from kansas that's something that you mm-hmm. want to see yeah yeah it's gonna be interesting we know how football dudes get out there to like you know oh, i remember Christ. football dudes used to come in the gym and try yeah. to die. Yep. they could do like i remember freddie mitchell uh, was at ucla same time as me he'd come in do all types of windmills but he didn't know how to land but he could come <laughs> and give you everything but you know them dudes couldn't the hand-eye coordination wasn't there, but now being able to see them going up against basketball players in this type of framework, yeah, that's entertainment. No, no. So, is there a rule? Can you hit and tackle out of the air? And you air? can't tackle. Well, you have to make a play on the ball okay. in the air. That's how we kept it from being total mayhem, right? <laughs> but on the floor, when you put the ball on the ground to dribble, you're greenlit, right? Mm-hmm. So the James Harden world where he dribbles for 15 seconds, somebody's going to clean his yeah, clock, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So you got to keep the ball hopping. You got to keep the ball moving. You got to, you know, swim moves, all that kind of stuff. But if you're driving towards the tramps and you're trying to take off, there's a guy looking to like mm-hmm. knock you out, take the ball back the other way, right? And you get a lot of really spectacular collisions like that like Chris Young the ghetto bird he used to just (laughs) just annihilate people Uh trying to get into the tramps so like just so that you guys know this isn't just like running up and down at LA Fitness Mm -hmm. we run pistol action (laughs) we run horns we run Iverson cuts in order to create space so that you're taking momentum into the springs Mm -hmm. and then in the springs with your teammates trying to beat the stopper, it's a whole secondary game. Yeah. So there's real levels to it and there's real strategic value once you start peeling back the layers. Now Gil, I don't know about you, but when I hear the words high quality meats, the only thing I can think about is butcher box. 100%, I try not to eat out too much because you know summer's right around the corner. So I have my chef cook up quality lean meats or seafood from butcher box that the whole family can enjoy. Yes, sir. My favorites are the tomahawk and that ribeye, and I love that I can get delivered right to my door. Oh, we! I'm getting hungry just thinking about it. And it's free shipping, and you can't lose. And to all our fans out there, if you sign up today, you can get free chicken nuggets for a year and 10% off your first box. 
That's a 22 ounce bag of gluten-free chicken nuggets in every order for a whole year. That's a lot of chicken nuggets. Yes, it is. Just make sure you go to butcherbox.com forward slash no chill. And don't forget to use the code no chill to claim this deal. Bon appetit. So we talk about slam ball, revolutionized the sport game in the early 2000s. We already talked about that. But uh, around like 2008 was the last time that you guys had the league in America, right? So right. it's been 15 years since it's been a thing. So why was now the perfect time to bring slam ball back? You know, um, people ask me all the time, like, why do you why do you stay with this? Why are you spending like 20, you know, 20, 25 hours a week, even when you're working another job, trying to bring slam ball back to the masses, right? And there is an answer, and I'm going to tell you right now. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles is the answer to that question. Mm -hmm. and, and the reality is, is that Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles came out as a black and white, dark, violent, hyper-violent comic book for adults. And the only thing color in that, in that comic book was the blood <laughs> because Leonardo was chopping people's heads off, mm -hmm. right? And... And the people loved it, but there weren't enough people that loved it, right? But then 10 years later, they got repackaged as a cartoon for kids, arguably a bigger audience, and it hit like wildfire. And to, to this day, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles is the biggest toy selling property of all time. More than Marvel, more than Star Wars, more than anyone, more than Beanie Babies, right? Wow. And that's because the format wasn't right. When we brought Slam Ball out, and you guys remember it, you guys loved it, people thought of it as a real sport, which it was, mm -hmm. and a real league, which it was not. Oh. It was a TV show. Uh -huh. We would get all these people together, shoot all the games, and then release them three months later. That's no way to build a sport. Now we've we're, we've raised uh, capital from an unbelievable group of all-star investors to make this a live, engageable, bettable sport. And this is our proper format. This is Ninja Turtles Redux, and we're ready to fly. We're cleared for takeoff, yeah. summer 2023. <laughs> oh, well, let's get it. So, Shakes, <laughs> you know, Slam Ball relies heavily on basketball components. Mm -hmm. But like we've already talked about, you are an innovator in that sport. It's like, you know, you look at basketball in the history of basketball. Back in the day, you watch old footage. It's dude shooting the set shot. Nobody's getting <laughs> across. You know, right. Bob Cousy was right. the world one. Bob Cousy was kind of right. giving you a little bit of that back then, and kind of. Right. But you were kind of innovator in the same way in slam ball. Mm -hmm. So how were you able to, to take your basketball game and make it a slam ball game? It really just was about just having the basketball in the rim. Um, that's the only thing you think about with slam ball. That's that's the same with basketball. The fact that you got to dribble and you got to shoot. You know that the, all those things are the same. But the, the slam zone, like when you get into the trampoline, it's totally different. It's totally different. You got to move differently. You got to adjust your body differently. The decisions you got to make before you jump in, after you jump in, is totally different. So I just, I really took on, I thought about skateboarding more than I did basketball when I was doing it. Like you, you got to position your body the right way in order to do this trick and to, to land it, you know. And then while you're doing this trick, you have to see your teammates and see if somebody's cutting with you, somebody's moving with you. So it's just a totally different mindset that I had to develop even two years after the, like the, the third season when we, when we play is when I really, really start getting it because now I've already embedded a way of playing. My body is ready to do something different. Like, you know, I can pull off a trick, but in the middle of it, I'm spinning, but I can still see you if you're moving around. You know, I have to learn that too. Like, it's to, it was a totally new thing that we just had to pick up on the fly. You know what I mean? So the only thing um, uh, from basketball I took was just the mentality <laughs> and the, you know what I mean? And the, and the, and the will to, to be open-minded and, and say, I, I want to do something new to something that's already kind of standardized, you know, and the rest was basically like football and, and, and um, gymnastics and skateboarding, you know, for me. Well, even in basketball, we deal with people who like, you know, well, I bought the throwback jersey so I can go out, I can go do what Gil does on the court. That's like really what they think. So it's slam ball the same way. The guys come out there like, oh, I was good at hoops. So I'm just going to kill at this. When you guys already said that 
That helps, but once you get out <laughs> nah, there, yeah. man, I'm trying to dribble off a trampoline or know how to bounce in from spot to spot. Oh, no, like, you got them guys that come out there. You try to tell, hold on, you got to do like this. Ain't like, oh, oh, oh. And it's just, you know what I mean? Crack their face against the, the, the glass, you know? You have, <laughs> had, you have that. Pick yourself back up, because now mm -hmm. you're going to listen for a little bit. So mm -hmm. just uh, take your time, <laughs> man. Just jump in take there like this. You know, but I get it, like, because you, you look at it from the outside, it looks way easier than what it is. And it really is more complicated thing than just running and jumping into the spring bed. You kind of got to have your body like ready to, you know, explode and then float. And then you got to think about where you're going to land at and how far you, you, you're going to drift and where, you know, what position in the other trampoline you're going to land at. If you're going to take contact, if you're not. You know, are you passing? So it's a lot. It's a lot of different things that you gotta, you know, understand when you when you plan um, slam ball, and from practicing it to the game is totally different. just like you like you know when you practicing yeah you can, but when you get in that game yeah, yeah different you know and the lights turn on it's, mm -hmm. yeah you are gonna see who really separates themselves you know Stan was the guy that figured out that I can show you the ball. And then have you track it and then do a 360 and you're not over here mm -hmm. when I come back around. Then the next time down the floor, he could do the same move and dude would think he was coming high, but he put it through his legs yeah. and now he's here. And so everything's like a pitch in baseball. It's like you're looking at it, you're playing it, and then all of a sudden you get beat in the air. And in slam ball, we like to say in the air, athleticism rules, right? So we're looking at those like out of control athletes. You know your favorite college team? There's yeah. that seventh or eighth guy, the, the second or third guy off the bench, who's like the best athlete in a 10 mile radius. Mm -hmm. And you're like, why didn't he get more time? He's a slam ball player. He just hasn't had the opportunity to plug into this yet. So we're looking, we're not looking for the same players that the NBA is looking for. Those guys are, are honed to like an unbelievable apex. Mm -hmm. Same thing about football players. We're looking for these raw, incredible athletes that can control their body 15, 16, 20 feet in the air. So is that part of gymnastics too? That's how we train, yeah. Okay. In the beginning, Stan will remember this, I actually realized at some point I had to get certified as a USA gymnastics instructor in order to train this with any kind of competency. Mm -hmm. So I learned how to train people in terms of holding position in the air, landing safely, all that kind of stuff. And we've developed so much technology, so many uh, safety protocols, equipment that we use that, that uh, you know, eliminates a lot of like ankle rolls that we saw early in the sport and stuff like that. So we've got so much tech and know-how that's like built into this at this point. We really feel like we're, we're in a really great spot. How about, uh, I'm, I'm trying to think of sports like, like volleyball mm -hmm. or those players. Yeah, I mean, we've had, if, we haven't had any volleyball players come out. We've had a couple, serious? like, a couple hockey guys come out that were actually pretty good at the stopper position, okay. you know? And because it's just they were really sturdy and they mm -hmm. just had really good timing. Um, but t generally, it's uh, basketball, basketball and football fo guys. And the football guys are like linebackers, DBs. Just ground hitters, right? Yeah, yeah just tremendous. Well, they, they'll. They'll get up in the air. Like we had two guys that came from football backgrounds. One was Trevor Anderson, who was six seven receiver, outside receiver, mm -hmm. who could just nobody could get up with him like in the air. And he was the MVP of one of our world championship series. And he never played organized basketball. And then Lamonica Garrett, who's actually become kind of a famous actor off of Slam Ball. Um, I shouldn't say just off of slam ball, but it certainly helped. Um, but LaMonica Garrett was just like banging everybody as a linebacker out of central Ohio. And then he led the league in scoring, having never played organized ball. So he was like a system guy mm -hmm. and he could just get up in the air and overwhelm the defense with strength at the rim. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to figure just your, just your natural leapers, people who know how to control mm -hmm. In air, yeah, right, would be, you know, basketball players and volleyball players. Um, well, speaking of, like, your alma mater, right? You remember Hassan Adams? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, Hassan Adams was a slam ball player. Like, yes. he would have been the gnarliest slam ball player of all time. What's crazy is uh, it's all like a physics problem, right? Mm -hmm. When you're coming off the the floor into the spring beds, if you're either bringing speed or you're bringing height. And then the springs translate that into whatever you want to use to try to take on the defense, right? So speed and 
vertical explosive athleticism both kind of factor into it. And Stan was this weird kind of perfect <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. combination of it. You remember how he used to take off of one foot yeah. on people? <laughs> well, in slam ball, you want to take off of one foot, then land in two, two feet, feet, and then explode. And he had both. Yeah. So how does slam ball go from an idea on a napkin? Because, you know, I'm thinking of early 90s. You <laughs> turned up, I don't you know, I don't know. I just, <laughs> turned up on I'm a just saying, he's turned up back, back in the day. But how <laughs> did slam ball go from an idea on a napkin to now international sensation? Uh, well, I mean, the way that happened is, um, you know, I told you I produced a lot of films at MSM. One of them just came out called uh, Stand. It's the Mahmoud Abdul Rauf yep. documentary. Very proud of that. Um, one of the reasons I wanted to make it is because Mahmoud has Tourette's and I grew up with Tourette's. Mm. So I still have it. Uh, every, you, you know, you never lose it. But Mahmoud and I would talk about Tourette's all the time. And what's really interesting is that you're like, it's a neurological condition where your brain like zigs instead of zagging, right? Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, maybe that had something to do with the choices Mahmoud made in his career, you know, doing things that people, a lot of people wouldn't do. And then my brain just goes to somewhere different, right? So I grew up, like I stole my mom's credit card to watch the UFC one when it first came out, right? And I just watched this thing where they took all these different pugilistic styles, Taekwondo, Jiu Jitsu, Sumo wrestling, and they just slammed them all together and made something that just blew my mind. And then I grew up playing basketball, football, hockey. And I was like, I like team sports. So how can I take the best elements of team sports and blend them together into something that's fast and fun? And that turned out to be slam ball. And uh, we started in a little warehouse. I I played ball at Janesta, so Stan was the best guy that we ever saw up there. He'd only show up like <laughs> once a month. But I went to Stan, I said, Stan, please come to this warehouse and come see what we're doing. And I got him out there. I got Mike Goldman out there. I got James Willis out there. Um, you know, all these guys that I knew. And it was just magical. It just worked from the very beginning. And a couple of guys, this was in East LA, a couple of guys came in off the street and they watched us play. And we didn't really want to ask them to leave because we thought they might be armed. So, <laughs> yeah. so we, we just kind of let them leave. And then they came back with like five friends. And within a week, we had like a thousand people packed into this warehouse watching Slam Ball. And we hadn't even figured out the rules yet. And this executive came by, Mike Tolan knew the guy who ran Spike TV and he got him to come by and he looked at it and he goes, I want this on Spike TV. And that's how we got a national television deal. And what's crazy is like, you know, for us to go through the process that we've gone through to be kind of coming out when alternative sports are red hot and younger audiences are reaching out for sports that they can call their own. Mm -hmm. I think the timing is just kind of right. Yeah. And also just the NBA product is really all about like outside shooting, not all about outside shooting, but that's the focus. Mm -hmm. And there's a whole generation of like NBA fans that don't remember what like all that gravity at the rim was like, like when you would put so much pressure on the rim, mm -hmm. like that was a fun, different kind of product. And that's what slam ball is like the gravity at the rim is crazy. And then what you can do off of that is kind of exciting too. Yeah. I think it's, per it's the perfect time with social media. I think if, if social media was around then, it would already be where you wanted to be. Yeah. Um, but because it's here now, you get to really take advantage of those those highlights on social media going viral. Well, I love that you said <laughs> that because like, you know, Blake Griffin like was an investor in the round. And when I talked to Blake, I was like, do you remember when you would do something on the Clippers and everybody had to run to the internet to mm -hmm. see it? That's the whole model for what mm -hmm. Slam Ball is. And he, he got a real kick out of that. So yeah, I think that's the concept is it's gonna have this like, you gotta see this. Slam Ball's always been this like, if you know, you know thing. Yep. And then now, now we've got this opportunity to kind of move it into the mainstream and we'll see, you know, how much how much water it holds. Well, you can start testing it now. All you do is just take all that footage, all that raw footage you have, yep. clip them up, put them in shorts. Well, I'll tell you what. <laughs> it's, it's hidden right now on the internet for yeah. those who haven't been watching. I, yeah. I see that stuff all the time yeah. now. Yeah. And for me, it's like blast from the past. Like, damn, yeah. like I forgot. Not that I forgot about it, but like it's nostalgia. Remembering those times. Yeah. Watching it on Spike. Because Spike had a bunch of off kilter programming, but that was kind of like the destination for college students back in the day, like Blue Mountain State and a bunch of other just random shit on there, but yeah. we, we would get down with it. But yeah. still want to ask you, so 
Mason comes to you like, yo, got this new shit. Mm. <laughs> Want you to come, come to this warehouse to try. What were your first thoughts when you heard about Slam Ball and how long did it take you to get down with the sport? At first, I didn't get it. First, I didn't get it because he had David. David uh, was playing first. David Redman. Red, oh, David oh, Red, Red. And Redman, I see him, and then he's like, man, you got to see this. He, he let me check out the tape. It was a, a little tape they made. Um, and y'all was like, had like, like one, it was like one trampoline uh-huh. <laughs> under the basket. And he was like, what? but it looked real cool. I was like, all right, you know, I'm already in junior college at this time, too. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, man, this thing ain't working out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So let me figure this out. And I went over there and I, and I ran back into Mason, like, man, I want to I wanna come and check it out. So, that's when we did uh, East LA. So then it's a bigger setup. It's a full court, you know, full slam ball court. Um, we had smaller uh, trampolines about on the side. You know how we got mm-hmm. uh, two side trampolines and two front ones? Side trampolines about this big. Wow. <laughs> so, yeah, that was terrible. We was like, okay, we're gonna make it work. And, um, and it was only about what, 12 of us, something like that? 12, 12 of us yeah. at that time. And I just felt like, damn, this is gonna happen. Like this is gonna work. And here's a platform for me to express my, you know, what I want to do in sports. And he gave me all the room to just go ahead, run, like run wild. Like this is at the beginning. So, mm-hmm. you know, there's no, there's no one to tell you what can happen, what can happen. We're all making this work right now. And it's already a cool product. He's already got it tested out. Like, you know, so I just felt like it was the right timing for me to, to come in at that time. Cause I wasn't, you know, you have to think, uh, realistically, too, like when you're playing sports, I wasn't about to go to the NBA. You know, I'm watching my boy out here kill it. Like, mm-hmm. I'm like, all right, no, I ain't me. I, can't, I, I, I missed the train, you know, on that one. So, but here we go. This is my opportunity. And this is my, my probably this is what basketball led me to, you know, uh, this is my engine to get to somewhere that I, I can contribute in the sports world. So I just I just latched on to it, man, and I, and I, I just caught on really quick. I think you would have been uh, dope at Slam Ball. Do, do you think play. because you, it was, do you, do you think that helped yeah. the creativity? Because yeah. you didn't have, there was no rules already. Yeah. There was no rules because you know you said it earlier. We didn't even put the rules in, right? And and because there was no rules, and it was just like, all right, here's a blank canvas, mm-hmm. go. And your mind gets to just, all right. Yeah. Because, yeah. you know, he said he's like, oh, th- th- he missed a shot. Mm-hmm. And you like, uh, oh, I can do this. <laughs> <laughs> and then go and everybody's yeah. like, is that legal? Or? <laughs> like, oh, man. If it wasn't, it is now. <laughs> you can just catch shit out the yeah. head. It's yeah. fucking legal. It's, you know, and, I, and, and it just makes sense that, you know, as you said, it started with this. Mm-hmm. And then now it expanded. And it just, it, I guess when you start off from with, with no construct of, mm. of just like rule, right? Mm. And you just say, all right, create your own. Mm. It becomes, it becomes easier. Yeah, it does. It, it's less pressure that mm-hmm. way too. Cause it's not like you stepping on somebody's toes. He was making a new sport. You know, he made a new sport and then he brought people in to help him make the sport. Mm-hmm. So I felt like here, I, this is how I can contribute. Like. I'm thinking of these things. I'm, I'm thinking of the rules. He had some, there were some rules in place, mm-hmm. you know, so everything that I came up with was beating the rule. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was like, oh, you should. yeah, I was like, all right, no, um, I still did the rule, but I could still do this within the rule. And it, and then um, people started saying, you know, is that okay or not? But at that time we were still just developing a whole sport. So it, it was like, you know, writing itself as we go. Yeah, most you know? people were trying to beat a rule in a sport is like, boring it's like hack a shack it's making the sport worse mm-hmm. he's beating the rules in order to make all this creative expression for himself so it was kind of beautiful and i'll tell you what we used stan was one of one right i had guys that played at kansas played football at mm-hmm. clemson i would have to teach them like i would teach little kids in gymnastics right how to get comfortable on the slam ball court stan was like putting a fish in water he could just do it all mm-hmm. and he was teaching us within like a week's time, right? And so we used to say like Stan is an alien from a planet that already had slam ball. Mm-hmm. And he just came here and we got lucky <laughs> enough to recruit him. And that's that's just like in the NBA, right? Where we penalize, see the NBA penalizes those testers, yeah. right? So right. when you're talking about someone testing something, right? You have a rule, mm-hmm. I read your rule book. Mm-hmm. So two steps, 
after I pick up the ball. Okay, so if I bounce it at the same time, that doesn't count as a step. So boom, <laughs> one, two, right? Oh, that's travel, that's three. No, 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 your rule says after I bounce the ball, I bounce it at the same time, now I, right? So now that becomes the zero step now, right? Mm -hmm. Now, okay, you have the hand out, okay. Um, legal defense, this is where the hand zone is, this is illegal. Okay, I'm gonna do that. That's where Tim Duncan comes in. Yeah. So James Harden started real, now James Harden comes along. He starts looking at these rules, started understanding human behavior, right? If I bounce the ball, everyone looks. All right, you have your hand on me, I'm gonna lock your hand, right? right? You're illegal, not me. I'm just letting everybody know you're illegal. Right, so you start doing that, we start penalizing. Like, you can't do that or we're not gonna give you that foul. And it's like, wait, hold on. Mm -hmm. You have rules. Mm -hmm. He is playing within the rules, teaching you different, Yeah. right? He's penalizing the guys who have no imagination, mm -hmm. right? You wanna ride That's me, good. I'm gonna hold it, I'm gonna pull it up, you're gonna get caught, right? If, you're smart enough, take your hand out of the cookie jar, yeah. right? And that's that's the thing that you need, you need people. There's gonna be guys, you have new rules, there's gonna be a guy out there that's gonna be tested. It's gonna be the stand, 2.0. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's gonna be yeah. testing Coach those rules. Stand. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? There's gonna be testing those rules, pushing them to the limits. Yeah. And that's why I say whenever I, 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 whenever the NBA has these rule books, right, these moves, I say, when you're thinking of a rule, Grab the most extreme athlete, right? If you say, all right, these are two steps after you pick up the ball. Mm -hmm. Stop using the Curries and the Clays for your demonstration. Mm -hmm. You need the Giannis's so they can let you see how far the ability of this rule is. Yeah. Because I think what happens is they see the rule at a small, you know, small little location. Okay, yeah, 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 two steps, you know, after you pick up the ball. And then they see this freak tries it and they say, oh no, that's illegal. And it's like, no, he did this the same yeah, move. <laughs> we don't really do that. Like, I tell you, there's, um, you know, a bunch of people coming into the sport that are pretty amazing. There's this one guy who's playing overseas right now in South America who is six foot nine, mm. 291 pounds, three and a half percent body fat. And I'm actually afraid of this guy being on the slam ball court because I'm thinking of it like, you know, from a physics perspective, like, I don't know what athletes like that are going to do in the slam ball court. Right. So, but it is right now the, the level of athleticism with creativity, with physicality just seems to be this kind of magic algorithm. Has he been on it before? No, not yet. Oh, like, so he, oh, so I'm he, just, can, I'm, he can be a bust. He could be. <laughs> he could be. He could be a bust. <laughs> but I'm very concerned. <laughs>